Uh, hello. Are you there? I think you are. Hey, well, um, then welcome back to Gordon's Garage. Um, I got my lapel, lapel mic. Let's, hopefully this is working. Let's see. And um, yeah, okay. I, I think the camera's working again. All right, well, I'm just out here in the shop. It's been a long time. Um, wow, I cannot remember when the last time I posted a video. A while back. Yeah. Anyways, um, so I've been working on little projects here and there. I've been doing a lot of work at the lake house and um, I've got a lot of stuff in life that's happened. So uh, I just kind of just put everything to the side. Um, getting a little more inspiration now to try to do something out in the shop. And you woke back up, look at there. Wow, okay. Um, so yeah, I just used a whole saw for wood to cut through sheet metal. Um, let me catch you up to speed on what I'm doing here. Um, a long time ago in the past, I had a uh, mechanism, a hand crank thing I made for my ratchet straps. I'll try and show that to you here. This is the mechanism that I built. This little hand crank. Squeaky as squeaky gets. And uh, it's to wrap up your straps. So um, this is something I wanted to uh, set you down here and take a look at this. Okay, so this is the way you're supposed to roll up your straps. If you put this hook in the middle, you're gonna wanna throw the hook. And if someone's on the other side of the trailer or the other side of the load, they're gonna get hit in the head with the hook. If there's no one on the side of the trailer or the load, this hook is gonna take out one of your clearance lights. I've done it and I, I was like, hey dummy, don't do that. So anytime you roll up your straps, roll up your straps like this, hang on to the hook and you throw this part, all right? And so when you roll up your straps, you gotta do that accordingly. So I'm gonna just um, throw this out, whoo, all right. Now I'm gonna throw the hook away because that's the last thing that goes on. And you take this thing right here. Let's turn you a little bit. And all I do is take and loop it like this. Stick it on one. Yeah, yeah. And then I hold my hand on the side here to keep it steady so I can feed this in. This is so much easier when you're trying to roll up your, core, or your um, straps. And done. Now I just push it straight off and it's all rolled up. It's a little wonky, but you lay it down flat and you pound on it and it'll go straight. Now, um, I like to put Velcros around to keep them where they are. Um, this is the way I like to do my straps. So, I like this mechanism, it's great. And I spin you around here. I put this part right here so I can hook on a drill and spin this without having a hand crank. I wanted to, uh, how do you say, automate it, okay? So that's what I built originally. And today I've taken, this used to be um, the door to a dryer. <laughs> that's where the handle was, right in the center. Anyways, that just piece of junk sheet metal. And um, what I'm doing is on the back side, you can see I've drawn where this thing goes. It goes right on this thing like that. Bam! And I drew, drilled a hole here so I could get to the trigger. So the trigger's right there. And if I've done this correctly, then this side's going to be hidden. And it's going to be like that. And I'm going to be able to reach in and just squeeze the trigger from there. And uh, that will spin this little doodad. Do -do -do -do. That's the goal. Um, so I'm basically automating a hand cranked uh, ratchet strap tie down thing. So yeah, got a lot of the um, manufacturing or the, the fabricating part of it done. And uh, let's, um, it just needs a little tweaking and then I'll mount it to the truck. We'll see what happens. Um, please pardon the wind. I got a in and out of the shop here. I've mounted this to the side of the bed right here. It's nice and flush-ish. It's not real perfect, but it's out of the way. So when I load something in the truck and get some out, it's, it, yeah. So um, I put uh, some vacuum hose around this little sharp edge. I can reach the trigger in there and I can pull on it real easy. There's even um, a way to reverse it if you want to. And I can get that set in the direction I want to go. And this is the bit here. And any of these hex-like bits will fit in that hole and so that means um 
whatever I make to spiral up it can be uh, just adapted to that little hex bit and I can stick it in there all right so next what I need to do is I need to test this out let's see if it works properly um, so I need to hook up my electric my little wires I want to have a hot wire run all the way to the battery up at the front probably on all the time I don't want to switch or anything in it because there's a switch right here and it's out of the weather and it's out of the way and all that um, the ground is just going to be a short ground so that's just going to be to uh, a ground uh, screw somewhere inside there and to the back of the drill so I'm going to take these two off lean it forward let's hook up these cables and just set a battery here temporarily and run it and uh, see how that works and if it works I'll go ahead and run the hot wire all the way to the front of the truck and um, start to making the winding apparatus. Yeah, let's see how this works. Okay, so all I've got is this piece, a little hex there, and one of these. Yeah, and it's got a hex on that. You can stick that in there and just reach in there, pull that trigger, and that spins. And I can roll up those core, uh, these uh, straps and this is already hooked up to the battery of the truck. Um, yeah, I've got it spinning the right way. Um, there is a, a reverse on this drill, so I just wanted to make sure, but anything could go in there and... Yeah. Um, my only fear is I got it going too fast. Maybe that will go a little too fast. We're gonna have to try it out and see, or I'm just going to build up my skills be able to handle it so dare I tear this apart or do I make myself another man it looks like I could just cut that off and I could um, file off five sides six six sides maybe and just stick that in there that's what it looks like Okay, I had to make a few modifications because uh, things just didn't go as planned. I went ahead, instead of butchering this one, I'll keep it and it sits around for other uses maybe. And uh, I just made another one, um, a couple pieces of dowel rod. It doesn't matter what diameter really, uh, just as long as they're smooth. Um, and then this is just one of these plates of metal that you get that you can put bolts in to anchor something to the floor or wall. Um, the back side, I put in one of those hex bits and I tried it and it just spun itself right out. So I needed something to keep it in. So if you look closely, I added a washer to it. That's about how deep that hole is in there. Well, the washer won't keep it in there, but this mechanism will. So when I lift up, it exposes the hole. I can put this in and whenever I let go, it will hold on to the back side of the washer, not letting it out. So I can stick that in there like that. And it's a snug fit right now, so whenever it wears a little, it's gonna get a little looser. Um, but anyways, um, that's how this thing is working. Um, I'm gonna run this, but I'm gonna turn the mic down because this uh, actual drill um, is a 12 volt Harbor Freight Special cordless drill. It's a um, 3 8 impact. So I really needed a regular drill. I just grabbed the first one I saw that was 12 volt cordless because the truck's 12 volt I want to wire it to the truck and so that's what I did just ran a hot wire to the battery ground to the frame and we've got a circuit as long as I pull the trigger now um, <laughs> since it's a ratchet uh, 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 I'm sorry since it's uh, an impact it's going to hammer and sometimes I can get a spin without it hammering sometimes it just sits there and hammers for a while uh, nevertheless it also does make it to where I can hold on to um, the strap and it doesn't yank it out of my hand. The impact will not go, it'll, it'll clutch out. So that kind of helped me in the long run, even though it's, it's noisy. So I'm gonna unroll this like so, get the other end, and I'm gonna show you this uh, thing in action. So uh, it's loud, don't worry, I'm gonna mic it down here just now.
Okay, so I decided to flip the camera around and let you see that um, there's not much C in there. There is a trigger right there. I uh, don't know if I can shade it enough or pivot up enough. Um, but the trigger to um, the drill is there and this hole, this is what it looks like. And lifting up on that. And a better look at this. So um, we're gonna have a little test here. Um, I'm gonna try the hand crank versus the new electric. Um, now, yes, I can attach a drill to the end of this instead of hand cranking. I could just automate it that way, um, but we're gonna test it two ways. Right here is a bag full of um, all of my ratchet straps, and that weight helps support and keep this thing still. If I take this off, This thing wiggles all in the holes. So this square tube is not the same size as that is. So it is what it is. Um, but I found, I put myself a CB mic hook thing on the back, I'm just taking things I have around the shop. And that's where I put the handles of the ratchet strap bag, like so. And that kind of holds my stuff together. So then, uh, yeah. So if y'all have a watch at home and y'all want to time this, yeah, on your mark, get set, go. This is very controlled. And take it off, it comes off very easy, it's all done. So that's how fast I can hand crank that versus get your stopwatch ready again. And we are going to time with this and I'm going to get this out of the way. I used to just keep those in the truck. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna turn down the sound. I'm gonna start timing. So, um, yeah, that was all right. Um, this one struggles a little bit, but it's electric and it's fun. <laughs> uh, the hand crank one is great, but uh, there's a little bit of a setup in, involved. Um, this one, I can take this out or I could leave it in. Uh, nevertheless, I am going to paint this. I don't want it to bare metal. And I need to clean up the mess on my uh, tailgate. Whew. Uh, okay, so I'm getting to a spot where I'm going to put, put up and uh, go home for the day. Uh, let's look here. Um, I uh, made me a table, a piece of plywood and four saw horses. <laughs> Got my jet skis sitting to the back there. We're going to cover up that second one. So um, I don't paint um, that jet ski. This is the blue frame. It is covered in dirt. Man, man. What? <sighs> Anyways, um, that's basically going to have to get washed again. I'm going to have to wet sand it and then we're changing colors. The blue just, I guess, was bad omen, bad juju. I don't know. It did not want to stick to that frame. I got to go and redo the paint job on it. So, yeah. <sighs> Repaint the frame red. We're going red. All right. And I think I'm going to take this thing, the instrument cluster. I think it's going to go red as well. And then the rest of the bike, I don't care what it is. Chrome, I, well, it's <laughs> just short of the fork tubes. Um, the rest of the entire bike is going to be black. Um, tossing between flat black and gloss black. Gloss black's hard. Uh, tank needs um, a lot of body work. So that's another thing. It's over there on the floor. Yeah, I got all the parts of the bike laying out here. This is now truly a parts bike. This is next episode. I think it was an 86 electric glide. Oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? Um, anyways, for this episode about the winder up thingy that I built there for the back of the truck, it's sitting outside in the sun. Watch out, this is going to get bright. And it seems to be just happy as a daisy out here. All right, flipping me around. Yep, it's just ready to go. Anyways, um, 
I want y'all to, uh, in the comments, I have yet to see, look at me. Oh yeah, oh you got a silhouette, there you go. All right, so in the comments, I've yet to see an aftermarket product like that or even uh, something that came from the factory option on a truck. I mean, think about it. You've got a pickup truck and you're going to haul stuff. You're going to get a, 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 I don't know, a washer, a dryer, a refrigerator, maybe a little couch or something, and you're going to have to take it home and you're going to have ratchet straps, crickety, crickety, crick, crick and, and then what? You got to hand roll them. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I have like 70 ratchet straps and hand rolling, about 12 of them. It just drives me nuts. So I had to put the hand crank thing together and that worked, that really did work. Um, but I wanted a little more, you know, like Tim Allen, tool time. He's like, har, 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 got more power. And I got it there. Anyways, um, that's gonna wrap up this video. Tell me if you've ever seen anything like that before. And uh, if you think it's a bad idea, do a red frame, red dash and black bike. Yeah? You know me, I love Star Wars, so Darth Vader themed anything will be awesome. So uh, let me know what you think and what you think about underglow lights. Are those things out of style or are they still kind of cool? Can I put a twist on it? If you got anything, put it in the comments because next episode is going to be painting that frame. Oh, can't wait. All right, y'all have a good weekend.